So here's some help with the Experiment 7 post lab. Question 1 says each reaction used an excess or extra of the reagent needed to push copper through the cycle of reactions. Why use an excess instead of just enough to react with the amount of copper used? So in these reactions, you want to get as high a yield of copper as possible. So you want all of the copper to react. A chemistry way of saying that would be you want copper to be the limiting reagent. And so you want to use more of the other reagent. So then why use much more instead of just enough? Well, the other reagent might have contaminants or impurities um, such that not all of it would react with copper. So by adding excess, you're making sure, absolutely certain, even if there are uh, impurities in the metal, that you will get, that all of the copper will react and the other reagent will be the excess reagent. Question two says, what purpose did the magnesium serve in part E? It lists two other metals that might have been used instead of magnesium. Hint, you should refer to a list of metal activity. So in the bottom right, I have a picture of magnesium. And in the bottom left, I have an excerpt from the procedure that shows part E. And you can see in this reaction that we're reacting copper to sulfate with magnesium. And magnesium is taking the place of copper. It's a single replacement reaction. And copper, which was dissolved in the solution, you can see the AQ for aqueous as the phase at the bottom of copper to sulfate. Uh, that copper turns into a solid. If you look on the right side of the arrow, you see an S next to the copper, meaning that it's precipitating out as a solid. It's raining out as a solid in the, uh, after the reaction. And so magnesium is serving to precipitate copper out of the solution, to make copper turn into a solid out of the solution, and it's doing that through a single replacement reaction. Now, magnesium is doing that because it's more reactive than copper. You can list metals according to how reactive they are, and that's called a metal activity series. And so I have one of these on the right here. Instead of magnesium, you could use any metal that is above copper. Copper is sort of at the bottom right. If you wanted a really, a really reactive metal, you can use one even more reactive than magnesium, but anything above copper is going, would, would have uh, completed this reaction. Now question three says, explain why potassium or sodium, which are cheap enough, were not used in place of the magnesium in part E. And here I have a picture of sodium in the bottom left and potassium in the bottom right. So to answer that question, I'll show you what happens when you put sodium and potassium into water. These metals are very high on metal activity series which means that they're very reactive. So here's potassium being put into water. Here is sodium being thrown into water. So I'm, I chose this video for dramatic effect. Of course, you'd never want to throw a chunk of sodium into a lake like this. But this is what happens when sodium reacts with the water. So you have a chunk of sodium falls into the lake. and reacts with the water. So we wouldn't want to choose sodium or potassium, even though they're reactive enough and they're not expensive because they're so reactive that they're dangerous. Step four, question four says, list two possible steps in the procedure that might have led to a loss of copper from the cycle of reactions. Be specific about the steps and how they might lose the copper. So make sure you list two steps and for each step, give a letter for the section of the procedure that the step happened in and a number for the part in that in that section for the exact step in that section where you could have uh, lost the copper and then say how how would you have lost the copper in that step question five says list two possible steps in the procedure that might have led to a gain in impurities to appear to be a gain of copper from the cycle of reactions be specific about the steps and how they might add impurities. So of course, make sure you list both steps. And when you do that, you want to give a letter for the section of the procedure and a number for the step in that section where you could have gained impurities. And then say how you might have added the impurities. Where would the impurities have come from?